Hey everyone, welcome back to another Portrait Pro facial retouching um, episode, I guess, tutorial or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I just, I don't know, I figured, you know, anytime I do retouching or whatever, I would just kind of, I don't know, record it and put it out there because, yeah, I mean, I can always teach you guys, you know, a couple of them, put a few tutorials out there, but as we all know, everybody's different as far as you know looks and all that other stuff different skin types hair types you know all that kind of thing so i think that um i don't know maybe it's not such a bad thing to actually have you know a new video um based on you know a different person so you know but i'll i'll try to put like a title or description or something like that that is you know keywords that are relevant to the kind of photo shoot that we're retouching so for this one today anyways as you can see uh this one is going to be uh headshots uh corporate headshots professional headshots whatever you want to call it just real basic you know in the studio kind of stuff um and honestly i think these are probably some of the best when it comes to demonstrating uh the retouching techniques that i like to use because um, that's, you know, the face is the most important thing in the photo, uh, specifically for headshots. And also, uh, it's really important for me, at least to make sure that, you know, they look like them, um, you know, not going for something too overly glamorous or too grizzled or what have you, you know, it's super important that they look how they are supposed to look in the photo. So anyways, let's see. Yeah. I didn't, uh, do any lighting like I usually do for this. So I apologize if, you know, the highlights are blown out or whatever. So anyways, moving on. Um, so first things first, um, usually Portrait Pro will, um, it'll bring you right into the dual screen mode. So you can see like before and after and all that stuff. But I find that if you try to adjust the outlines of the face, and features and stuff uh, when it's in this mode it tends to the software tends to run a little bit uh, slower so maybe it's just me I'm not really sure but we're gonna go back and we're gonna go to kind of like the the intro screen where you know if it didn't automatically detect the face this would be the first screen that you go for but I usually go back to this because if you're adjusting the outlines uh, the software tends to move a little bit faster so we're just going to start with the jawline, which uh, for me is extremely important because if you need to do like, I don't know, just any sort of, um, you know, facial recontouring or, you know, what have you, uh, you know, that's going to be what affects it the most, like the face shape and stuff. Uh, then we just go, I just go in and just kind of drag, make sure everything's covered pretty well. Honestly, for the most part, um, like I've said in previous videos, it's... Uh, it's pretty damn good uh, when it comes to you know finding the outlines and stuff, and you don't have to be super picky about it because it's um, you know I'm just extremely detail oriented, which I know most of you guys are, but I really just kind of do it more for demonstration purposes, so that way you guys can see you know all the little uh, areas and nuances that you can actually you know edit. So now that we're done, and it's you know. Yeah, it's important to get this stuff accurate, but at the same time, you don't have to overdo it. Now, the other thing that I've said in the past is when it comes to presets, uh, they're super important if you're going to be retouching more than one image of the same person, because like I said earlier in this video, um, you know, everybody's face is different. So, of course, there's going to be some specific tweaks uh, for each person that you may need to apply to multiple pictures. So for example, if I've got, you know, more than just, you know, maybe they picked more than just one photo from their headshot session and I don't want to have to go through and completely retweak every single one from square one, then creating the presets is like super easy. So anyways, uh, let's see here. Okay. So a good base to start with, and I think, it already applies it in here is the general like female standard so um, I just click that the cool thing too is that if there are any uh, like regular adjustments that you always do for uh, like say females and stuff then what you can do is go into the presets so for example I'll just give you an example here for face sculpt I almost always elongate the neck uh, adjust the nose slightly and then also under skin smoothing I tend to bring the uh, remove shine up all the way uh, and then I go back and just tweak it as needed, but then go into save preset and then set 
as default for all females. Uh, you can go and just go down to female standard, you know, select that one, click female, and then click OK. It'll say, are you sure you want to overwrite this one? You just say, yeah, you know, or have an, any like internal conflict and stuff. So, but I've already done that. So then I just kind of wave over this one here to make the outlines go away. And you can already see a difference. Um, a lot of the shine has been removed. Uh, the teeth have been whitened a little bit. Um, I like doing the teeth whitening in um, in Portrait Pro because if I when I used to do it in Lightroom, I would do it almost too much. And you know, when you stare at the same photo for a long period of time, it uh, you, you tend to start over tweaking it too much. Speaking of Lightroom, I actually uh, do all of my color correction, uh, anything like general overall stuff. I do that first uh, because um, I haven't really edited in Portrait Pro a, a DNG file or a RAW file. So what I tend to do is, um, let's see, I'm just going to check the face sculpt a little bit. So sometimes depending on the camera angle or just maybe they're smiling a bit too wide, you can go in and just adjust the, um, the master fade slider, you know, if you need to go in and do like like for me, I've got chipmunk cheeks, so if I smile too wide, then, you know, or if I clench my teeth, then my cheeks look bigger than they are. So, and sometimes, you know, obviously people don't want that too much, so you just kind of go in and just kind of contour it that way. Um, there we go. Let's see. Eyes look good. Make a nice contact with the eyes. Let's see. Don't really need to do any, uh, like, jawline stuff as far as, like, you know, double chin or anything because I always uh, give people instructions on how to fix that while we're taking pictures. Let's see. Okay, so skin smoothing. Now we're going to go into face. And for the most part, everything looks really good. Yes, you can go in and remove all the shine, and that's great, but a lot of times when you do that, um, it starts to make the retouching look too fake. Like I feel in my opinion, you need just a little bit of highlights on the face. So for this one here, uh, we've got some on the nose, a little bit on the cheeks, and also we've got some on the chin, which if I were to go in and get rid of that completely, then that's when it starts to look plastic. So let's see, remove shine. I might bring it back just a tad. It was also really humid today. So um, I'm not saying that she was sweaty or oily skinned or anything like that, but um, you know sometimes that might account for you know why they have um, you know a little bit more shine than they normally would. And then I always zoom out whenever I make an adjustment just to kind of see how it looks you know from far away. You know I zoom in, I zoom out, just as a point of reference. So anyways, looking pretty good. Now uh, my preset before. Um, and it's just actually something that I haven't really fixed yet. If you go down to skin coloring controls, notice how there is a significant difference between like the coloration of her skin on the left versus on the right. You know, on the right, it's definitely more even, but at the same time, it she's got like a really healthy tan that she didn't have when she came in the studio when I took the picture. So I, a lot of times we'll come down here and just kind of bring it down. See, we're at 23. Let me see how it looks if we go to zero. You know, uh, that actually, to me, looks more natural. Um, the other nice thing about the skin coloring controls is that it actually, like, if the skin is too magenta or green or whatever, it does a really good job of actually correcting the skin tone to look like the actual skin tone that it should be. Now, one of the things that Portrait Pro has really been, um, like, one of the features that is really good about the software is the makeup controls. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of bring it up a little bit because, you know, what if they had like a cup of coffee or some water before you started taking photos, um, then, uh, you know, that makeup that they spent time on goes away. So I'm just going to up the lipstick a little bit. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, mascara looks good. Eyeshadow, I think, I think we're good. Eyeliner. Uh, sometimes you might have to boost the eye eyeliner a little bit just to help the eyes stand out. Uh, blush, no, she's got a good bronzer, highlighter, eyebrow pencil. Now, me being a guy, you know, a lot of times I don't know all the terms for the makeup and stuff. I just know when makeup looks good or when it doesn't, and hers looks good. So we're really, I just went in just to kind of tweak the lips a little bit, again, to help them stand out um, from... Uh, you know, from, from the rest of the face so that the major uh, facial features uh, are easily uh, recognized. And let's see. 
I mean, honestly, I pretty much just opened this from, you know, straight into, uh, from Lightroom into here, and it automatically did a pretty awesome job. Let's see. Now, you may want to go in. I obviously, you know, lit stuff in the studio uh, the way that I need to, but sometimes I may want to go in and just adjust it a little bit more. Let's see here. See, like, that's if I just didn't do a really great job. But honestly, I think it was good the way it was before. Plus, I mean, look at the comparison on the left. Like, we don't want it to look too different. So I'm going to go back here, take down the modeling. That's right about there. And then um, the shadow is pretty good. I might bring in just a little bit of kick on the left. There we go. So it's not too much shade. Just a little bit right here. Let's go in again. Watch the uh, left side of the photo here. I know I was thinking backwards terms like I'll go extreme, but I'm going to bring it back. I just wanted you guys to see that. I'm going to zoom back out. And it's looking pretty good. Like we're checking the lighting. It pretty much matches up. Uh, we just kind of relaxed the muscles in the jaw by doing the face sculpting so that, um, you know, because sometimes people get really tense and when they clench their jaws, uh, you know, tend, like the muscles tend to pop out and doesn't always look good. Plus, you know, being tense definitely, you know, comes across in the image. And then you can also have the option of going in and smoothing the hair do, do, do hair controls just check the hair color area and that did it automatically it just automatically found all the hair that needs to be done and then I go into hair tidying mode it's really amazing for getting um, any like crosshairs or cobwebs as some people call them I hate using that term but I you know I think you guys understand what I mean but it goes in and just helps kind of smooth all that stuff out you can really go extreme with it if you want but, you know, again, we're trying to make this look real. You know, if you go too smooth, it's just like if you use noise reduction too much, it will just take out the detail and then it's like, oh, wow, they went in with painter, you know. Um, oh, man, light went really bright. Sorry about that. Probably because I can't stand still. Anyways, uh, doo -doo -doo. let's see here. Alrighty, so we're going to zoom back out make sure my okay yeah it's not great I know my lighting looks terrible um, anyways so I think that looks pretty good um, I do think maybe the skin could let's see here we're just gonna go in and actually whoops not touch up we're gonna go into skin smoothing controls view edit we're just gonna kinda paint this back in because sometimes the opacity is not up to par and then that way it'll apply the, apply the same smoothing all around and then the last thing I'll do is go in and just look for any little like spots that need to be removed. Um, honestly, it did a, an amazing job. Yeah, if you go to skin smoothing and you do spot removal, it'll spot removal. It'll automatically do. Um, you know, it'll search for spots and stuff, obviously, and remove them for you. So no problem there. It's already done. And I don't know. I'm actually really uh, really happy with it. Again, I'm just going to zoom back out, take a look, maybe, uh, again, just kind of mess with the, there we go. Okay, sorry, I'm getting a little paranoid now about <laughs> my face cam. Um, I think that looks really good. I don't know, what do you guys think? So uh, I am always up to hearing what you guys have to say. Plus, I also get a lot of questions about my workflow and my process. Like, do I start in Lightroom first and then go to Portrait Pro or do, you know, one way or the other? And I am always up for answering questions. So uh, I didn't get here learning all this stuff by myself. You know, I learned from other people and I'm always about returning the favor. So anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and save and it'll re-import it back into Lightroom. But don't worry, it's uh, I'm not going to make you watch that part. But following up, I'm going to do a second video using Portrait Pro Body so that you guys can see uh, in a typical like headshot situation like this, uh, how you can control different things like, you know, the shape of the figure, you know, maybe straightening up the posture a little bit, kind of bringing in the waistline because sometimes the clothes don't quite fit right, you know, all that kind of stuff. So 
Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm kind of considering doing more of these just as I go. Like whenever I have a client actually order a headshot, you know, that they've chosen finally after the proofs and stuff, you know, going in and doing a retouching and then just recording and then showing you guys. Um, so, so yeah. All right. Well, uh, my name is Dustin Meyer. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to get more. There's also a little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can get notifications the next time I uh, upload a new video. So, uh, so yeah. All right. We'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching.